So we've reported extensively on the states struggling with vaccine distribution for so many reasons, but now we'd like to focus on a state where the vaccine rollout, rollout has so far been hailed as a success, the state of West Virginia. West Virginia's health commissioner, commissioner Dr. Ayn, Ayn Amjad, is joining us to discuss what they're doing that other states might follow, what we can learn. Uh, Dr. Amjad, thanks very much for being with us. So why is it working there? What are you doing right? Well, th thanks for having me, Diane and Terry. Well, we, we did a couple things differently. Um, we have something called a joint interagency task force that was set up with our National Guard by executive order by our governor. And, and using that model with our um, National Guard, we, we did something a little different. Um, we did not opt out of the pharmacy program, but we use local pharmacies um, that are embedded with our um, long-term care facilities. And with our joint interagency task force, we utilized um, different stakeholders. So we had our local pharmacy chains, we had our hospital care associations, our health care, and a lot of um, local um, volunteers. And, and with that, we were able to engage these local partners and that was able to um, get out the vaccines and shots in arms rather quickly. So that worked out well for us here in West Virginia. And that, that was our success, I believe, so far. It's really impressive. Uh, of course, is there anything that you can look at in other states from what you can see that they aren't doing right, that, they're, that, that they could do better? I don't want to criticize other states because everyone is unique in their own way. You know, West Virginia, that worked well for us. You know, we're, we're a small state, we're a rural state. And I think with us, you know, that, that worked well for us. Our National Guard has been helping us from the beginning of the pandemic. And we have, you know, 54% of our pharmacies are, are, you know, locally owned, family owned businesses. And we didn't have, you know, the CVS Walgreens on every corner. So I think engaging those early on, and we had close relationships relationships with the long-term care facilities, hospital chains. So engaging those right away and putting the shots in arms quickly, you know, our governor made it very clear to us that he did not want the vaccine sitting in warehouses. He told us um, quickly that every time we put a shot in an arm, that's saving a life. So we, you know, moved very fast with that, with that in mind. So I think that worked well for us here in West Virginia, but it is very difficult. The task was very difficult, but we didn't wait for any um, initial initiative necessarily by the federal government, we, we got to work very quickly and our JIATA or the interagency task force was, um, was you know, very um, initiative in that as well with our National Guard team. Just get on it. That's, that sounds like the way to go for, for us all, right? Well, uh, to be clear, though, while the efficiency and the logistics have been in place and you guys have really done a great job there, I understand the supplies is still not there. So talk to us about the supply issues that every state are, is facing. Well, yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, so, so far the Biden administration, I, I'll give them props. You know, they've only been there for a week and they've increased our supply by about 16 percent. And everyone is, you know, begging for more, wanting more. West Virginia is the third oldest state. 20 percent of our population is 65 and older. And we have been begging, just like every other state, that we want more vaccines. We have put in our first round of vaccines, 95 percent in arms. We want more vaccines. We have been wanting um, more vaccines, not just for census population, which they're allocating per census population. We have been saying that we want more vaccines, um, census population per age, and that, that's what we've been saying. So if the CDC wants us to be vaccinating 65 and older, we want vaccines per age population, not just for census population. So while we are very grateful and impressed that the Biden administration has been able to give 16% more, this, you know, the upcoming um, allocation, we would like more vaccines for our aging population. And also um, it, that should be looked at as well. We have an aging population. West Virginia is known to have you know, high obesity rates, which is the number one um, risk factor for COVID-19. So we, we would like the administration to be looking that as well for West Virginia. And also the, you know, the speed that we're giving vaccines, we would like that to be looked at as well. Great, a lot of work ahead. You guys are doing a great job there in West Virginia. Thanks. Dr. Ayn Amjad, thanks very much. Thank you guys so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.